Thank you for joining us today. Very excited to talk about how to build a chat assistant or co-pilot fast using Canopy from Pinecone, an AnyScale endpoint. My name is Fei Nguyen. Um, I'm a technical product marketing manager at AnyScale. And I'm very pleased to be joined uh, by Roy. Roy is part of the engineering team at Pinecone uh, and Carl, Carl is a solution architect at AnyScale. Okay, so for today, uh, this is the agenda. We're gonna be talking about some of the challenges of building a, a chat assistant or co-pilot. Uh, Roy will cover uh, Canopy, a new framework um, from Pinecone, as well as the application architecture. I'll touch on the latest feature of AnyScale Endpoint, uh, and Carl is gonna uh, you know, perform a live code uh, walkthrough uh, or de demo. We'll make sure to leave plenty of time for uh, question and answers. So if you have any question, please use the Q&A uh, function uh, in Zoom. Um, and then at the end of the call or you know, during um, the, the presentation, I'll make sure to surface those questions so that we can answer them um, on, on the webinar. OK, so what are the challenges of building a chat assistant? Right. So as you may know, uh, grounding your palm and your LLM with relevant information is very important in order to mitigate uh, some hallucinations uh, and uh, you know optimize the accuracy of the responses uh, and prime your LLM to be the most relevant and, and useful right so when you think about um, you know providing the context in the background uh, there's many different considerations to be uh, made um, if you think about a book uh, many different chapters, I uh, have many different paragraphs or many different sentences or maybe different keywords. So based on your use cases, what is the granularity of the context that you want to provide and pass it onto the LLM and to your palm is quite important, right? So this is also known as chunking. So defining the size of your chunking uh, and then using the right embedding model to uh, represent that into a vector space and retrieve it efficiently uh, is all about you know, context retrieval. When you provide a chat assistant or copilot to your user, um, it's very often going to be a multi-turn type of experiences. And so managing the chat history and being uh, and making sure that you pass the history onto your LLM appropriately is also uh, you know, something that you need to account for. When we talk about query optimization, there's many different algorithms. The most common one is cosine similarities. There's also other type of algorithm to fetch the right uh, or the most important vectors in your uh, database. Um, and also when you get the result, you may have multiple um, query result. And so being able to filter, re-rank uh, the result set so that you can pass the most pertinent information onto your LLM uh, is quite important. Um, so you know, today, obviously, we're covering how to fetch information from, from Pinecone and Vector Database but there's different ways on how you can augment the generation. You can make use of function call API uh, in JSON format so that you can interact with other systems than uh, databases um, and you know, allow you to query from multiple sources, uh, you know, um, synthesize the information um, and uh, ground your uh, LLM more appropriately. When we talk about serving LLM efficiently, um, there's no one model that is going to fit or serve all your use cases. You obviously need to iterate and experiment across different models of different sizes. You may have to fine tune your model based on you know the type of use cases that uh, you're trying to to address. Latency is quite important if you want to you know provide a good uh, user experience. So the time it takes to generate the first token and then you can stream the rest of the token is a consideration. It can be quite important. Uh, but you know, in some other use cases, throughput uh, is more important and the end-to-end -end of the experience, right? So based on your use cases, uh, you may want to optimize on latency versus throughput. And then of course, cost is quite important when you take all those uh, you know different configurations in account and, and different resources that it is needed to provide this experience. You need to make sure that um, you know uh, it is cost efficient. Uh, it can be sustainable based on the value that you provide uh, on those uh, POC prototype or production workload. Okay, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Roy to talk about Canopy. 
Thank you. Um, so first, um, can you hear me well? Yes, perfect. Great. Um, so what is Canopy? Um, so we launched Canopy a couple of months ago uh, um, at, at Pinecone. And what we had in mind is that we are wanting, we want to build a RAG framework and a context engine that will sit on top of Pinecone. Uh, so you probably know Pinecone uh, vector database uh, that can scale to billions of, of vectors. Uh, and we wanted to have like a RAG interface uh, or a RAG framework that will enable people to build reliably uh, AI applications. Um, so the RAG framework is basically, you're going to see it in the demo later, um, this chat or natural language interface um, that combines an external knowledge base. Um, we also have, uh, and I don't know how much of it we'll cover today, uh, a context engine package inside where basically um, you are able to specify a query, but also a token budget to get to the relevant context. So when you're building an application, you're actually able to control for the amount of tokens that are sent in the context. And for that control for the cost of your application, also allowing you to work in multiple tiers. Um, everything here obviously works on top of Pinecon, although we see a future where uh, we will support maybe other databases or other uh, knowledge bases. Um, yeah, next slide, please. So what is it actually? Um, Canopy offers developers three layers uh, within one package. A library, a server, and uh, a CLI. Um, so the lowest uh, kind of layer is the library. It's a stack of uh, uh, the logic and the classes that could be configured, could be extended, uh, that takes care of the entire uh, uh, pipeline to do RAG both in and out. So both the ETL of ingesting data in, processing data, chunking, encoding the data or embedding the data, uh, the retrieval part, which uh, is using Pinecone for vector search, but also uh, can do ranking and can do other uh, second stage uh, operations. Uh, but then before, uh, before the context will go to the uh, language model, there's also everything around context construction and, and budgeting, right? As we specified before. Um, so then the library is uh, something that we actively develop and our friends here at AnyScale also contributed a lot of uh, new capabilities uh, to Canopy. Um, when we actually want to use it or actually want to serve it, uh, Canopy offers uh, a server. So, you know, basically WSGI server uh, that could be configured externally. So if you look at the right-hand uh, side of the screen, you could see that I have a class, an AnyScale LLM class. It extends OpenAI LLM just because it has a similar interface, uh, but does completely different things. Uh, but then when I uh, want to configure my server, uh, so the lower part will show you that for my chat engine, I would like to use an LLM of type any scale. And the model that I, would, I want to use is Llama 7 billion, but could be any, uh, any other model that is uh, uh, available on uh, any scale endpoints. Finally, uh, Canopy has a CLI. I'm not sure if we uh, have time to show everything today, uh, but basically a CLI that enables you to do utility operations, right? So managing indexes, debugging mostly, or local chatting. So when you develop, you have a way to iterate quickly. Yeah, next slide. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Roy. So, uh, yeah, quickly, any scale endpoint, the latest features. So, um, uh, any scale endpoint is a serverless API. Uh, you know, we just announced the support of Llama Guard, uh, which is, uh, you know, based on Llama 2 model. Uh, and Llama Guard has been um, provided by Meta that has been fine tuned for content moderation and, and guardrail, um, as well as other models such as Mistral, uh, Open Orca. Um, and, you know, we're working on also having the Mistral um, mixture expert um, 
as well very soon. So any scale endpoint is actually free to try uh, up until the first million token. And then after that, you can provide your credit card and then pay as you go after that. Typically the pricing depends on the model size. Um, I think for the largest model, the Llama 270B, it's a dollar per million token. Um, and um, you know it varies for uh, the different model size. We also just recently announced uh, the support of Embeddings API, which we'll see in this demo, as well as function call API and uh, JSON format, right? So in this kind of endpoint is really the lowest friction to allow you to experiment and prototype using open source model, open weight model, and uh, you know including the Embeddings API, it's an open uh, weight model, right? Um, and allow you to easily upgrade onto a private endpoint. Right, so if you have more stringent uh, data privacy uh, or security, you can bring your own cloud, um, AWS or GCP, and we'll be deploying the endpoint into your account behind your VPC and behind your firewall and provide you the same experience as you know, the AnyScale public endpoint. Thanks. So, um... I want to go kind of over the the architecture of a common AI application, kind of show you how everything works together, right? How Canopy and uh, AnyScale endpoints uh, with the Pinecone database kind of make it really easy to uh, to build uh, an, an AI application. So let's uh, let's say that I want to build like a chat, a simple chat uh, interface over some data that I have. Um, so actually, the first thing I would probably want to do is take my documents and upload those. Um, so when I do that, what basically happens is that knowledge base, which is one of the internal classes within uh, Canopy. Uh, so the knowledge base will process the data, chunk it according to the strategy that you uh, predefined. Uh, we'll go to the AnyScale endpoints for embedding uh, and encode the data to a vector uh, and then store this vector at, on Pinecore, right? Uh, and it will do it iteratively for a large amount of documents uh, and different formats. Everything uh, is kind of managed within this knowledge base. Uh, then once I have my uh, documents ready uh, and ready for uh, querying, basically my application would interact with Canopy Chat Engine. Similarly, it would interact with an you know, open AI uh, a model or any scale uh, vanilla model. Basically, um, providing the chat history as the input, the messages. Uh, then what we are going to do is we're gonna, within the chat engine, usually uh, kind of, and it's also kind of configurable, but usually what we will see people doing is uh, doing some query rephrasal. So basically taking the chat history and asking the LLM to, uh, to come up with the, the query that needs to go to the knowledge base. We will take this query, embed it, uh, and send it to the knowledge base. The knowledge base will query Pinecode, uh, fetch the relevant documents into the context engine. Context engine will reconstruct the context according to the budget that was configured when the application uh, uh, started, and then send back this content to the LLM via the chat engine. When the LLM responses, this response is going back to the user, but it is already all the context has been managed and sent to the LLM. So the uh, answer is already a ragged answer. Um, so that's kind of the flow in its most simple. Um, and I think uh, if questions, we'll keep it to the end and I'll be happy to answer. Great, thank you. And I can see a flurry of questions coming in. This is uh, great, um, but let's go through the demo and hopefully the demo will answer some of the questions, uh, but you know, we'll make sure to uh, answer some of the questions at the end. Um, so with that, uh, Cal. Okay. Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Cal Huang. I'm a solutions architect with AnyScale. So what I'm showing right now is the AnyScale platform. Maybe some of you haven't seen this before. So basically uh, this is the uh, fully managed rate cluster provided by AnyScale. Uh, We'll very quickly go through some very basic uh, functions of this console is that we provide rate cluster management. And what you're seeing right now, the workspace is actually a developer ID environment built on top of the rate cluster. 
you see that we provide uh, VS Code and Jupyter Notebook as common uh, pro programming tools. We also provide the read dashboard to monitor all the read cluster usage. Um, here you can see that uh, we only have a head node running with the CPU and memory usage here. And today, uh, the Jupyter Notebook, uh, we're going to run on this read cluster. And I will walk you through the code, how to using Canopy with any skill endpoint. So uh, here is how you install Canopy. Uh, the name of the package is called Canopy-SDK. Uh, after the installation, uh, of course, you need to specify your basic pinecone uh, tokens. And uh, oh, sorry, this should be the any skill uh, API tokens. Uh, with all those token, I already run this uh, sale to have the token set. Now let's start reading some documents. So we, uh, in this sample notebook, there's a public data set provided by uh, Pinecone. Uh, you were reading several uh, lines and rows from this Pinecone data sets. So basically there's the, the information uh, scraped from the Pinecone documents website. The next step, we are going to initial, initialize tokenizer for the canopy uh, to use with any scale endpoint. Space, basically, we're going to demo how to using the open source Llama model with canopy. So the tokenizer is also one provided uh, here called the Llama tokenizer. So you should initialize the tokenizer with this Llama tokenizer. And you can do a very simple test that they can tokenize the world properly. The next step, we are going to create knowledge base to store our data. So knowledge base is the the very first concept in uh, Canopy, which will store uh, all your data set. So to start with knowledge base, uh, you can initially initialize it with uh, index name, and you need to specify the record encoder to be any skill record encoder. So basically, the record encoder here is the embedding model for the uh, data you're going to embed it and save, as, save in the uh, PyCon vector database. If this index is not available, you can call the next cell to create it. So I can start running this cell. Since this one is already created, uh, so they won't go into this create NB index uh, cell here. Let me turn this one off so you can see more clear, clearly. So if this uh, index did not uh, exist, so they will go to here to create it for you and uh, make sure that you choose dimension as 1024. Basically, that's the uh, dimension model any scale supported for now. Next step, you are going to simply run knowledge base connect to connect to the Pinecone database. Uh, for the data set we download above, we are going to create them as document object. And here's one example of the document example in the sample data set. You can see that we have a document ID to represent this file. And here the text field will record what all the detailed information stored in this document. And the last, we have some metadata showing that the created time and the title for this document. So you can call knowledge base absurd to absurd all those documents up to uh, the Pinecone database. So in the backend, this uh, knowledge base will call the embedding model you specified earlier, which is any scale embedding, to uh, embed all those documents, change them to vector, absurd to the vector base. So I'm going to skip this step because I already done this for you. After that, you can see that in the Pinecone console, you will see that an index called the canopy dash dash any scale endpoint AE dash embedding was created here. And inside this uh, uh, sample index, we create 840 vectors with dimension of 1024 to record all those informations. So here's the examples of one of the vectors. Okay, uh, now the 
knowledge base is created and a Pinecone index was also inserted. Now you can start to query this database directly on the knowledge based query. For example, if you want to query a text, what's the P1 port capacity, uh, they will return all these uh, query results here. They will show you what's the document for this query, what's the source of it, and what's the similarity score for it. And when you do the query, of course, you can choose uh, the top key K result by specifying the top key parameter. Uh, if we say that this one only by two, they will simply reply two result instead of uh, default uh, about 10, I guess. Okay, the next concept I'm going to talk about is the context engine. Now you have a knowledge base. The next step you can do is create a context engine using this knowledge base. With this context engine, you can also do the query, specify the query text and the top key result, and then get a result here. So this will be very similar to what we get above, but just with the context engine. Here's the result of showing the top five result here. The next component in Canopy is the chat engine. That's really the beauty of it. The chat engine is built on top of context engine, and you also can specify an LLM provider. Here we're using uh, the AnyScale integrate with Canopy called AnyScale LLM to uh, power this chat engine. Another thing you want to specify is the query builder. We now we are using a very uh, basic query builder called the last message query builder to uh, power this chat engine. With all those components ready, now you can really start your chat assistant talk to the uh, knowledge base you inserted before. So here, let's say if you put this uh, information, uh, this query about what's the capacity of a P1 port into this chat engine, what is the response here? So they will tell you, based on the context, the capacity of P1 port is about 1 million vectors with uh, 768 dimension. And you can find this based on these documents. And this chat will also return the history of our uh, chat history. Now you can go to the next question, still using the chat API to see what's the latency requirement here. And you can see they will respond with the uh, latency time, less than 100 milliseconds based on this information. And you can see the history is got updated with our uh, first question list here and the second question list there. So now you already have a chat assistant built on top of both uh, a Pinecone and any skill. So this is a very quick go through of how you use Canopy API to build the uh, chat engine. And next I want to show you how we can directly use in Canopy CLL to do the similar work. To use in the CLL, we will create a YAML file to have the configurations set up for this uh, CLL usage. Uh, from this one, you can see here, uh, we also need to specify what type of tokenizer we're going to use and what's the model used behind this Llama tokenizer. For the chat engine, we're using any scale LLM, and we can also specify which model uh, you want to use from any scale public endpoint. Here, we're using 77 billion model. And uh, Last I want to show is for the knowledge base, as I mentioned before, we are using the AnyScale record encoder, which is our embedding model. And the model we are using is the GTE-large model. And uh, the batch size, uh, even though it's not directly used in the chat, but later on, if you want to insert your uh, documents into the knowledge base, uh, they will be batched using this batch size value to work with it. Okay, now we have this config file. We can start a chat engine on top of it. So here's a command how you start Canopy with this config file. If you run this line, they will connect to the uh, 
Pinecone server and uh, start a chat server locally. And uh, this one is already connect to our AE embedding vector database online. And now you can start the canopy chat directly. So now you already have a chat board available for you to chat with. So let's try the same question before. What is the P1 port capacity? And escape followed by enter. So this bot will directly uh, do the rack application and give you the answer here. You can also keep, what's the latency? Since all the history was stored automatically, so they will directly know that what you were asking there and get the answer for you from there. Of course, you can keep chatting with uh, uh, this uh, application to throw in more questions. And this is uh, all the answers uh, they will give to you based on the Victor database. Uh, results here. Uh, so this is the example of this uh, YAML file. And uh, actually in the Canopy repo, they provide uh, the full configuration file here. They will specify all the relative information so you can configure uh, based on your application needs. For example, this is a configured YAML file. You can basically modify what's the system prompt you want to apply to the LLM model, right? So here is the default one. Using the following context, context to answer the queries in the next message, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, also the query builder prompt uh, is based, if you, after getting your context and your query, they were using this uh, query builder prompt to create a, a very helpful query for your next uh, query to the engine. And the tokenizer, uh, of course, OpenAI is also supported. You can using the OpenAI tokenizer, uh, specify which model you want to use. And uh, for chat engine, you see, we can also play with what's the maximum length of the prompt, what's the maximum generated token, context token, et cetera, et cetera. And also how many history you want to save for the chat engine. OpenAI as a default, engine here. Uh, this is the model you want to use. Uh, for now, any skill LLI can be also supplied here as LLM provider. Query engine, context engine, and a knowledge base. So there's a lot of parameters you can play with. With this one modified based on your needs, then you can directly run the canopy COI to start your chat application. And, and one thing I'd, I'd like to add is this is pretty powerful in my mind because, you know, I mentioned before, you have all those different set of configuration that you need to iterate based on your use case and your applications. And so having everything stored in a config YAML file, you can start iterating and, uh, you know, improving upon your baseline config configuration for your bag application. And maybe you can have multiple, you can store a version and then, you know, quickly uh, spin up a bag application based on your configuration. So to me, I mean that's that's super cool that you know I can have multiple YAML file based on the solution and rag application that I want to build. Exactly. So uh, Canopy is an open source tool. So for now they have support for uh, you know different type of LLM, different even the chunkers. Uh, and I believe with more people contributed to it, there will be more component be supported. And it was more easy for people to customize their chat application and have a quick, really quick iteration on that and build the application out. Great, awesome. All right, can we um, uh, turn over to the links and then uh, maybe we can do some Q and A. Uh, unless, yeah, was was anything else you wanted to present? Uh, that's all from me. Okay. Let's, we can go to the Q&A session. Great, thank you.
All right, so let me quickly share my screen. Um, all right, so we've done this. Um, so these are you know a couple of links. Um, if you wanted to try Pinecone and Iniscal Endpoint for free, that's the first link, respectively, uh, for Pinecone and uh, Iniscal Endpoint. Uh, the example will be pushed shortly onto the github.com Pinecone uh, GitHub repo. And if you're interested in just more generic example using any scale endpoint, we also have a repo uh, with some good books. Um, but let's turn into the question. I think there were some um, very interesting questions and, um, you know, why um, or Carl, maybe, you know, you can put, provide some of your ideas. So the first question is, is Canopy like Lang Langchain? Uh, there's a couple of questions along those lines. Uh, maybe I can provide my take and then um, you can add some colors. I think Langchain has a bigger scope and mission um, and is tried to really implement and integrate many different tools. I think what Canopy is laser focused on building RAG applications. Um, and you know, you saw the example, and that's really, you know, all it is um, I think a laser focus on um and not you know trying to to be everything and do everything in the LLM space. Um, you know, Roy, what's your take? So I, I think that's uh uh that's accurate. Um, I think also one difference that I see in, in uh, um, as we move forward is that um, really for Canopy, we are focusing on knowledge retrieval, right? This is what Pinecon does. We're not trying to do uh, any anything uh, uh, on the LLMs or on the uh, other components. Um, and the way we see the future going as well is that a lot of the heavy lifting will go to the data. So I don't know if you uh, remember the early days of uh, machine learning. Uh, it started off with the models. It started off with a lot of uh, interesting stuff, but ultimately it went uh, down to the ability of processing large amounts of data uh, and storing large amounts of data and, and, and actually the quality of the data that you feed into your learning system, right? Um, and the way we build Canopy is kind of, with focus in this area, not trying to get everything out of everything, ending up, I feel like, as kind of the lowest common denominator, we are trying to be really good at something really focused around drag, right? Um, okay. Thank you. All right, another question for you, Roy. Does Pinecone vector database support um, lag pair non-vector data? It seems to me, does it support metadata, right? Yeah. So um, we are supporting like uh, uh, arbitrary metadata. Uh, I think that in the future you would see uh, um, innovation on this side, both on Pinecon side and on, on Canopy side of really extending this, not to just be data, but to actually be knowledge, right? I think data and knowledge are similar, but not exactly the same thing. So yeah. Great, thank you. The next question, which is you know quite popular, um, so clearly we're talking about text as a modality here uh, using an mm -hmm. instant endpoint, but you know, does Pinecone support other modality, uh, wave to WAG, uh, video, image, you know, what, uh, how do people use uh, Pinecone for different modalities? So, yeah, so Pinecone supports any modality, right? So with what's common to all of those uh, uh, modalities is that, ultimately to store those or to represent those, we're using some high dimensional uh, uh, space, like high dimensional semantic representation, right? This is the way that we use in order to retrieve any any type of kind of unstructured multimodal data. So Pangon supports it naturally. Um, right now, Canopy is focused around text. I think this is where we meet most of our uh, uh, customers today. Uh, but as time goes, I think that we will definitely want to see Canopy going multimodal. Also, the models around uh, multimodal models are becoming more and more performant and more and more uh, uh, um, available in the open source. Um, so hopefully, yeah, we'll see multimodality becoming a, a central thing soon. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. An interesting one. Does Canopy replace Llama Hub? or is a competitor to Llama Index? In my mind, I mean, there's always gonna be some overlapping features. Um, naturally, I think it's more complementary to Llama Index, 
the way I think about Lama Index is, you know, a way to manage your different pipeline from different sources to create embeddings. I don't believe that Lama Index provide a vector database um, or serve model. So, you know, that's why I think it's more complementary than um, competitive. Yeah, and, and I think, the, and, and one comment here, um, I don't think, I don't see ourselves as, as the competitors of, uh, of uh, uh, Llama Index or Langchain. I think that in the end of the day, what we, what we as Pancon want to see is developers succeeding in building AI application at scale, right? And by even if, in the, even if you're using uh, Langchain along with uh, any scale endpoint and Pinecone vector database directly, I'm happy for that as well. So I think it's all about kind of meeting different kind of customers at different point in time. A hundred percent, right? The more options and choices um, you can use and is available for a developer to hear the applications, you know, by all means. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Can the embedding model be fine-tuned? Um, so we just announced uh, the availability of the embedding model and API. Um, we don't support today fine-tuning the embedding model, but certainly something that, you know, we'll take into account uh, as we um, flesh out our roadmap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, someone is asking, um, is the chat history being handled by the clients and not by the canopy or the server itself? Uh, maybe while you can shed some light there. Yeah, so I think you saw two kind of interactions. So when Kyle was kind of walking through the library, uh, you saw uh, Kyle kind of passing in the history. So we actually follow uh, open the open AI kind of uh, interface, which I think is a, a decision we made as a lot of the other community parts um, for example, Vercel and other kind of uh, providers of different parts of the stack uh, have good integration. Uh, and this one is kind of having the history in the control of the user. So the API itself has the history in the control of the user. However, you saw that the CLI is already managing, uh, so the chat CLI is already managing this for you. So building this is really, really simple. And I think we will start adding more examples on how to do it. However, I think the interesting part is kind of where the future is going, right? Um, so we saw a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago, uh, assistance API and threads and other concepts. Um, definitely, I think, and you can, I think it's recorded, so uh, you can open up the recording at some point. Uh, I see us uh, also going into kind of history management. Uh, whether uh, in a form of a thread or whether in a more complex uh, form. I think that if you think about it, history is in essence also data, right? It's also knowledge, right? Um, so I think it should be treated this way. And this is how we kind of plan. Uh, and hopefully we, we will uh, provide some uh, kind of public roadmap soon for Canopy. Uh, so you can see kind of where this fits in in our plan. Perfect. Yeah, the transition between stateless to stateful type of mm -hmm. uh, experience uh, makes perfect sense for a database to, to be managing that aspect. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Um, okay, there was a question. Where the chunking, tokenizing, and embeddings uh, take place? Um, so in the example that uh, Carl has shown, the embedding is being performed by the AnyScale uh, endpoint. Obviously, you can use other means. Um, you know, similar to what you know OpenAI does. Um, so you know that's how it was performed in the demo. Okay, what is the additional value of the context engine layer? Why can uh, the more direct queries be made? Um, so maybe why? I, I, I think I just learned something that the fact that you can limit the number of token and having the context engine manage that for you, I think that's super cool, right? But, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, why? So Canopy is still in the early days, um, but I actually think that uh, when we view kind of uh, uh, the stack, I think the context engine part is where all the innovation will go in. And I'll try to explain. Um, in the end of the day, we see lots of development around models, right? So new models every day. I don't know how the team here at Anyscale is catching up with, you know, every new model coming out. Um, so models are, are becoming more available and, and, and 
have many, so even if you saw the new Mistral models, have different abilities. Already kind of models with uh, some fused in chain of thought and other complex kind of uh, or reasoning path, right? Um, for context engine, um, I think that this is the this is the layer that actually helps you uh, in terms of uh, 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 your application side. This is the this is the layer that actually helps you go through a lot of information and figure out what is only the right context. So there was a question somewhere around, can I tune top K? So today you can tune top K, it's something that you can do. Um, however, in the future, I would want this to disappear. And, I, and I'll try to explain. In the end of the day, what you're actually expecting uh, a knowledge base to do is to be able to tell you, hey, given this query, I'm going to provide you with the relevant context and the relevant context only, right? LLMs are sensitive to noise. So we don't want to uh, uh, just shove in irrelevant context to our model, right? So one query might have a thousand documents supporting it. One query might have one document supporting it. In the end of the day, the context engine layer is the one that should simplify it for you as a developer, this process of actually needing to figure out what is the top K, how do I make sure that I'm not retrieving too much or too little? Uh, so I hope that's, that makes sense. But that's a great question, actually. Great, thank you. Um, this maybe should be an easy one. Um, <clears throat> they have multiple users that require different access control. Um, so how would you, um, you know, create multi-tenancy within Pinecone? Can you create multiple indices with different uh, permission and controls? So yeah, so we have actually a couple of layers of, of control. Um, I think the two interesting ones in terms of multi-tenancy are indexes and namespaces, right? Um, so indexes are, as, as Carl shown, are uh, uh, objects in space that have the same uh, embedding space, same metric, right? Um, and a namespace is a sub of this index that allows you to have a, a strict separation between data points. So actually, um, given that in a reasonable use case, you will probably have a good setting of an LLM that you chose and tuned or selected from uh, 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 from any scale endpoint or an embedding model that fits your uh, uh, needs. Uh, and ultimately you'll have multiple uh, uh, tenants working with the same configuration. So I think for multi-tenancy, what we see more common is namespaces. And actually we're gonna uh, um, have some more content around how to use namespace and basically how to do multi-tenancy with Canopy. Great, thank you. Another question, uh, does any scale support cohere a Google model with the same API? So you know, if you think about the API is really streamlined around the open AI SDK. So you know you can build your own abstractions and route accordingly to different providers. We are also thinking about a concept of a router. So think of it as uh, you pass your pump, and then based on the nature of the pump, you can you know pass it to different type of models of different sizes based on you know the nature and the complexity of your pump, right? So this router concept can be uh, you know uh, be used for the any scale within the different models within any scale. Um, you know, it could be also extended to uh, invoke different uh, LLM providers. Okay, I think we are at time. Thank you for all the questions. Um, we'll make sure to uh, push all the latest example in the GitHub repo. Um, and if you have any questions, you can reach out um, on a Slack channel or, you know, different community uh, on Pinecone and uh, on any scale. Thank you, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you.